right? It's not, it, it's like, let's take the absolute um, the maximum of this, this, and that, even if it compromises user experience. And, and that's where I, I think we differentiate. If we can't deliver it with a good user experience, then, uh, then we're not, we're not going to do it. And not that we're great at user experience. There's always things we can improve on for sure. Uh, but some of those initiatives with privacy security, we want to deliver with a, a very familiar, you know, user experience, what people are used to and not drive them down some very bizarre path that makes them just go, ah, I'm just going to go use the very unprivate stuff like a Coinbase, which mm -hmm. admittedly is something that I've said with respect to messaging, like, oh, Signal sucked like six years ago. So what did I do? I used the shitty stuff because that's where everyone else is going to be. Same thing with crypto. Like if, if the private stuff are shitty to use, no one's going to use it. And it'll just get driven towards the, the the public transparent things. No, that's definitely correct. I mean, I suppose it's also when you're when you're a beginner in crypto as well. There's a lot of information being thrown at you, um, oh. and if you're also if you're a beginner, it's it's terrifying. Like I remember when I first got into crypto and sending oh. my first transaction, it's like, oh my god, I'm sending my money to this string of, I, 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 who knows, you know, I'm, and it goes, and then because with where it's Bitcoin, it's you know, it takes ten minutes. So I'm sitting there thinking, oh god, yeah, you know, I, I didn't I didn't really understand the blockchain at that point either. So it was like. I, is it going to come? Is it going to turn up? I don't know. Yeah, so I, I guess, it. <laughs> yeah, it's like, so you want to, you definitely find yourself relying on things that look very clean, clear, simple, very modern. Familiar, yeah. Because you're otherwise terrified. <laughs> so. Uh, no, absolutely. So like, you know, getting a user flow and, and the thing is user experience is super, super subjective, right? It depends who you ask, what their experience level is, what have they done in, the, in their past life and whatnot. It's very subjective, but the, the one anchor that we try to utilize in, in defining uh, a familiar or good user experience is, is familiarity. What are people used to doing with a financial application? Great. Let's try as best as possible to mirror that experience. Right? And everyone calls, everyone says like, hey, when's the, when's the Venmo experience of crypto going to happen? And it, it's going to be hard for us to be exactly Venmo because you know, it's one centralized entity and you can't Venmo from, you can't use your Venmo app to send someone money um, on Zelle. That's incompatible. So once you have these kind of agreed upon standards, there's always a little bit of a compromise than someone just vertically integrating, being fully centralized. Um, and that's the challenge, but let's at least get as close as we can um, and see where we can have a, a good balance of the ideology in the technology, such as privacy, security, autonomy. Those are the three kind of tenets that we try to stand by. A balance of that, but then user experience. So people who don't care about those three things still get it. Something you mentioned as well is that, um... The uh, edge is, is uh, supports mul multiple different types of uh, cryptocurrencies and tokens. Um, was that something that you guys wanted to do from the beginning, or is that something that kind of appeared uh, after a while because of user demand or the setting a challenge, or, or, or I guess as you say, trying to kind of create like a Venmo experience of okay, well, someone wants to use this token, we accept it, we accept that one, we accept that the best stuff. What was it that kind no, of? No, actually, that? I mean, when we founded it, we were really hoping Bitcoin would be it. Um, mm -hmm. I was, I won't call it a Bitcoin maximalist, but I was, I always felt like, oh, Bitcoin can achieve just about any of the things that other cryptocurrencies would propose. I always saw other, other coins as the test bed. I'm like, hey, let's see if it works and see if there's demand for it. And if there is, and it saw enough interest, then it could be incorporated into Bitcoin, whether it be, you know, block size changes, programmability, um, speed of transactions and, and whatnot. And it is much simpler to achieve a Venmo experience with just one coin. Like there is no Venmo or Venmo-like app that has you deal with multiple assets. Like that's actually a, a really shitty experience from that, from that point of view. And when we realized that Bitcoin was going to have its specific use case and not a bunch of others that people both demanded and I feel like the industry needed, that's when we had to make that hard decision. Okay, we're going to have to support multiple assets, right? Bitcoin has kind of ossified itself into its definition of, of sound money. And that's entirely fine. It's okay to specialize and to, you know, to be the thing that you, you feel like you're, you're good at. You know, they always say that at startups, right? Pick your expertise, specialize in it, and excel at that one thing. That does come at the compromise of being flexible and being able to use for other things. So when we realized that that was happening and that Bitcoin wasn't going to change, it wasn't going to adopt other ideas, then that's when we branched out. And we said, okay, we do have to support um, other different assets as well. Our focus early on as Airbits, which is the original company name and original product, was for payments. You know, we've we had BitRefill integration way back then, like in in the early days. I think the only company that integrated BitRefill into an actual like self custody wallet. Um, and payments was a key part of our our mission statement. We want to see Bitcoin be used in the economy. 
But as I'd mentioned, volatility, we kind of underestimated how powerful volatility was in making Bitcoin tough for payments. And that's when we said, okay, let's, let's pivot and focus on trade capabilities, buy, sell, and trade. But with the goal of getting people off the centralized exchanges, because that's where they all were. Now, even people that didn't need the, the, the speed of a centralized exchange and the trading options of a centralized exchange and whatnot, nothing fancy. They said, hey, I just want to acquire some Bitcoin, hold on to it for either a few months or a few years, maybe trade it into an, another asset that a friend of mine told me, but they weren't day traders or even weekly traders. Um, a lot of those people would make a purchase every couple of months, but then just leave it on the exchange. So our goal is let's get those type of people off the centralized exchanges into the self-custody apps like Edge, but allow them to do the functionality they needed, which is buy, sell, and trade a little less frequently, um, but with all the functionality that you know, they, they would require. So that's, that was kind of our vision. That's why we, we, we had pivoted to offer uh, more assets. And we're excited to see what those assets bring, specifically things like privacy. Like you just cannot get the automatic level of privacy that a Monero offers in anything that's pure Bitcoin. There's always going to be, I can do this, 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 and this to get a third of the privacy of Monero. That's a good point you take. Like obviously if your vision is that you want to provide the app that kind of provides users with the ability to transact in what they want and get involved in what they want, then I suppose to be able to accept these different cryptocurrencies is what achieves that yeah. goal essentially. Yeah. And the use is different now. It's not payments anymore, but the ideology is the same, right? So you want to give them the same level of very easy security, right? Key management is very different in edge than in other apps. You don't have to write down 24 words. Um, create an account and log in. So that part security being easy is still part of the mission statement. Um, privacy is still there. Everything in the app is fully encrypted. We don't see any of the transactions that people make when they send and receive money to and from friends. It's on the blockchain, but it doesn't go through us. So we don't know what our users are doing. Um, uh, security, privacy, and then the autonomy, which we didn't really touch on, which is that you're independent, you have control. Um, you know, there's other self custody apps where you control your private keys but you can't do anything unless the company's infrastructure is up. Like I cannot send a transaction on many different wallet options unless the company's servers are up for me to send a transaction through, to create the transaction for me and broadcast the transaction, know what my balance is. And that's fundamentally different. We, do, we, take, it, we take a much, much more difficult approach for just about all the functionalities in the app. So if Edge goes down, you can still send and receive money. Um, and so that privacy, security, autonomy, we'll, you'll see that in a lot of our marketing. Those are kind of three, three pillars of what we try to build. Um, it simply changed from privacy, security, autonomy in a payments-focused app to privacy, security, and autonomy in a, in a buy, sell, and trade-focused, exchange-focused application. Yeah, you pointed it's out that Bitcoin on-chain was bad for payments. Um, yeah, yeah. Do you have an opinion on the Lightning Network? Do you see it as a possible solution or not? So I think, I, I think it is a possible solution. Um, however, much like what I'd mentioned before, I think it does have UX issues, like significant UX issues. Um, I try to stay pretty um, abreast of kind of new development in, in Lightning. I am probably about a year behind on new development. Um, so actually your team is one that I'd really love to be able to kind of sit down and chat with and understand some of the new development that may address some of the user experience issues. But based on my last trip in Miami, um, uh, while I think things have improved a bit, some of the main challenges that I see in driving adoption to a, you know, kind of the normie where they don't have to know that they're using, um, you know, this weird privacy preserving autonomous uh, technology. Uh, I, I don't think is there yet. I, it, it's hard to hide the complexity of lightning. You end up having to deal with its complexity. Um, and that's the part that, well, yeah, it can work. It, it still doesn't feel like it's going to work for masses. And I'm hoping those problems get resolved, but in the interim, it's, uh, it still feels like, it's, I won't call it say early tech, but uh, unsolved problems still exist. But I, yeah, I would definitely like that to be resolved. You know, that, would, that would help you know, obviously Bitcoin heavily as it tries to compete with a lot of currencies that are claimed to be faster and cheaper. Um, but yeah, I haven't, I feel like the user experience is not quite there yet. So Paul, um, I listened to you and, and I, yeah, and I got this kind of right that it seems like you kind of like have a lot of expectations for, you know, Bitcoin and what they could achieve. And it seems that, you know, you feel that, you know, Bitcoin, you know, in your opinion, you might have fallen short of what you expected. So is, mm -hmm. is that actually the case? And do you see, um, what exactly, if that is, the case, what are exactly the expectations of Bitcoin and do you think that 
Bitcoin is currently being underutilized. My expectations is, you know, just ba based on the the original founding of our company, what our, our mission was and what our product was trying to achieve was, yeah, it was it was going to fully replace fiat currency, be used for payments, for store of value. It would basically digital gold before the dollar existed. And if you look back, you know, multiple hundreds of years ago, uh, we had gold, we had no internet, we didn't have any types of digital forms of payments, we had physical payments, and we had a hard money to do those payments with. So we had a hard money with gold, it was used for payments. And really what I saw is that we transitioned from the hard money that we use for payments to a technology that layered, in a way it was a layer two technology, right? In the dollar, a debt-based instrument that had gold underneath it, backing it, but it was a more efficient technology. So checks are way more efficient to write in a million dollars worth Right, I can write a million dollar check with one little piece of paper. Um, a single piece of paper can represent a hundred dollars. That's really, you know, and you could stack a hundred dollars this big for ten thousand dollars. It's hard to do that with gold. So to me, the dollar was basically a payment mechanism for gold, but it got compromised because there was a tr there was a trust factor in there. And the excitement about Bitcoin was a, was my belief that it would allow us to return to the original underlying asset. But as I mentioned, with its own built-in payment network, which allowed a digital payment. So that was my hope. I, I expected, yeah, we'd replace the dollar. Everyone would be paying with Bitcoin. They would hold their, their value in Bitcoin, just like they, they could have been gold. And yeah, you're right. It hasn't, it, in my eyes, it hasn't achieved that goal today. It might do so from the viewpoint of Lightning getting adopted um, or other layer two solutions that can do the payment side of it uh, with you know, just you know, Bitcoin itself being the store of value side of it. But at that to me, it hasn't come to fruition. And so that's where other assets are really trying to fill in that void. Whether they'll be successful, hard to say. It's really hard to say because there's so many. And it's such a long tail. It's like Bitcoin here and then a long tail after that as far as other assets that are trying to be payment. Okay.